All right, welcome, welcome. So we are about to do a full walkthrough of this amazing new LP tool built by the team at Component uh, called PubSyn 2.0. Uh, so to everyone here, I think that if you're here, you're already familiar with Perpetual Protocol. Uh, but in case you're not, just a quick overview, Perpetual Protocol is a decentralized exchange that enables on-chain trading of perps. We allow any trader to take up to 10x leverage and start uh, trading on the platform. The counterparty to these trades are LPs who simply provide their liquidity onto the pools and they can start earning in exchange of basically providing the liquidity and being the counterparty to the trade. So uh, an LP has to basically choose the range in which they want to provide liquidity and they can start earning this is based on the uni v3 principles and it's an action uh, we actually built on top of uni v3 uh, which means that you have to choose the market in which you want to add liquidity the range uh, as well as the leverage um yeah so so that's a bit about perp uh, but we'll uh, jump right into perp sim now um and basically uh it's 2.0 because we've like the team's been working on this project for quite some time and uh today the core focus of the presentation is to just uh talk about the new features that we've built and by the way like you can you can lp uh you can simulate positions as well as directly lp from this tool so it's like a full end-to-end -to -end tool for any lp activities um and yeah what we'll do is we'll just like uh do a quick intro to the amazing team behind it because most of you have probably never met the guys behind uh you know people who have built this tool even if you've tried it before and then we'll dive right into the new tools how to use it and of course at the end we'll take questions and feedback and uh maybe just even like get some uh intro from you guys as to how you've been using this tool and what you would like to see uh yeah and yeah and obviously at the end we'll tell you how you can reach out to us i handle partnerships and grants at perp and i've been working with james and brendan for quite some time um that's it i'll stop talking over to you brendan awesome thanks so much anisha so hi everyone i'm brendan from component and uh, we here at component are on a mission to improve decision making in DeFi. Uh, so what that means is that um, the solutions we build, including PerpSim, are focused on enhancing user experience and providing advanced contextual data to help DeFi investors make better decisions. We've been partnered closely with Perp uh, team for over a year on PerpSim. And PerpSim is a platform, as Anisha said, for simulating, uh, managing, simulating and managing liquidity positions in Perp V2. We originally designed the tool to level the playing field for market makers to provide effective backtesting and tooling for the average Joe trader and any DGen out there, along with more sophisticated investors. So we're providing access to unique data and calculations, including a permanent loss, rewards, leverage, and more. It's the only simulator in market that takes into account rewards, um, which make up a pretty significant portion of uh, returns in any liquidity position. So as many of you know, we first released this product in October, uh, and since then we sat down with many users to learn about the different ways to make PerpSim more useful. And we announced a couple of uh, exciting new features just a few weeks ago. So the biggest updates since V1 uh, include more customization and improved data visualization. So now I want us to think about a trader uh, named Peter. So Peter is a more harried trader and is used to thinking about his risk levels when making investments. Before this, PerpSim only had backtesting and metrics, which was helping with, uh, which was missing crucial uh, traditional metrics, namely volatility and drift. So we've added those to the, the platform. But showing calculated volatility and, and drift allowed Peter to think about his LPs a little bit more like he would an ETF or a stock, where this is a known value. But more importantly, we needed to consider that in DeFi, there are complications associated with volatility. Peter is aware that in DeFi markets are prone to anomalies like FTX or the UST fiasco. These things could rock the markets and lead to rapid spikes in volatility. So we wanted to account for this by allowing our users to change the time frame that we look at to consider the volatility of the asset. So users can change this for anywhere from a year 
to five days of consideration and you can see that those numbers change drastically the last five days has been particularly crazy so you're going to have a huge volatility but if we choose a more stable timeline six months or three months then we can see that that price movement changes the other thing that we wanted to provide peter with is the ability for him to change the way that he sees this shift so right now we're looking at the hourly volatility of that asset which is pretty huge almost half of a dollar an hour or daily monthly or yearly we wanted to provide yearly although we find it less useful for the way that you're actually thinking about your liquidity provision because yearly is the stat that's usually recorded on stocks etfs um, and other places on the internet so if you want to compare our values with other places where you could find them then yearly is the way to do it also if you wanted to sort of keep this as a gauge in your head about how volatile an asset is. Most of the other reportings will be yearly. And so that this makes sense to report. We do this in both uh, percentage movement and uh, in dollars for both volatility and drift. So let's take a look at one of the other reasons why we use volatility and drift. Beyond looking into the past, our metrics also now have the ability to look into the future. So with predictive pricing, we, we're taking a look into the future and determine a range of likely price outcomes for an asset. We use Brownian motion to present these curves that show the user's likely price movement of the asset based on its volatility and optionally drift. So that the user for a user defined period. Now you can see also when I change this around that we're going to have huge spikes in the way that we think an asset is moving. However, if you find a more, you know, regular timeline, we can see that this actually looks a lot better with with the way that this asset's been moving compared to if we were to look at this over a year when the drift is actually positive because of this huge spike up here anyways so the, dialing in these these metrics allow them to do a lot more work for our users anecdotally we've had really great success trading on price movement over short periods aligning ourselves with the range and direction um, has earned quite a few diamond returns but this is just me talking as a DGen. We would need so much more data to determine any statistical success, but I really encourage you to play around with this. All right, now back to Peter. In our time in the PERP ecosystem, we've experienced a few quality of life items that came to us as feature requests. So while our initial release, we enabled users to deposit money um, and add liquidity, we were missing quite a few options here. Since then, we've become feature complete with PERP, allowing us to withdraw, add and remove liquidity from existing positions and uh, exit positions entirely. But we wanted to go a little bit further because of Peter. So I'm sorry, you're gonna have to watch me connect my wallet, which the rest of the PERP team knows I'm pretty notoriously slow with. So now that my wallet's connected, I can actually see all of my, my current positions. I want you to think about this, this trader, Peter. He spends about a couple hours a day managing his positions because in other interfaces, he has to go pool by pool and position by position in order. In this new iteration of PerpSim, Peter can access all of his positions in one place, regardless of pool, and check if they're making money or losing money. With um, You can check what fees are associated and the IL and whether a position is in range. Additionally, he can edit positions right here from add if they're if they're doing well or remove the position, even remove the position entirely if he'd like to right on this page. So the users have the ability to do this much, much faster. We're hoping that this will save users some time and allow them to actually interact more with their positions instead of spending time going through a UI in order to make these changes. At this point, I'd like to uh, take a moment to address some additional feedback that we receive from PERP users. We understand that many of you have expressed the desire for alerts and on price or volume changes in the pools where you provide liquidity. So it's evident that this feature can be invaluable to helping you stay well informed. As of now, we haven't implemented this feature on in PERPSIM. However, we'd like to mention that we've built a robust alert system for a wide range of metrics across various DEXs in our other product on the component platform. If you're interested in learning more about alerts capabilities, we're open to discussion uh, and feel free to get in touch. 
uh, we can schedule a time to chat for further. Anisha has our contact information, and we're happy to provide it in the chat here. So uh, now, does anyone have any questions about anything I've shown you or anything PerpSim? Awesome. Yeah, Anisha, go for it. Um, it's not really a question, but um, I just wanted to point out that we've, uh, like, I love how you guys have impl implemented the simulation as well as the wallet mode. Um, and for me personally, it's useful because I don't actually have to add funds to my wallet to simulate some of, like, what my positions would look like, especially if you're trying to scale up your LP strategy or you're trying to, uh, yeah, basically like, or or like you don't want to connect if you're new to perp and you don't want to uh, immediately deposit funds on perp, but just want to see what your returns would look like before you start depositing funds. I feel like that's a great way to, to do that. And I mean, I know that currently our uh, UI doesn't offer that feature. So I really love like that you guys have uh, built out the simulation mode. Like this yeah, right there. It was a, it was a real debate after we became feature complete to to whether or not to keep it, but uh, I'm really glad that we did. It, it allows you to be much more flexible in terms of how you're going to estimate. I don't know if you guys noticed when I when I switched my wallet that this changed into a uh, into a wallet pin instead of a sim. But uh, this is kind of a confusing mechanism we find. But to change the, the amount of your collateral that you're going to be simulating, which affects your ROI and APR, you add that here. Whereas with your wallet, we just read that off of your vault contract. Got it, yeah. I'd also love to know the drift bit. Uh, so is that essentially sort of like a future of uh the past uh price price movement so if the if basically assumes that the the future price movement will replicate the past price movement in the duration set by the user yeah that's correct so drift i find the best way to explain it is uh visually uh if you see like over the course of a certain period that the you know stock is trending down from where it started then the drift term changes to be either positive or negative so in this case if i went over 12 where am i here is this going to be i can't see the bottom of my chart because of so here we're in july so this is a six month period so the drift term is probably going to be oh this is a month this is one month sorry no this is over a year i'm so sorry here we go so yeah, this assumes that the um, yeah the, the price would move upwards slightly with a with a really small drift like this, like two dollars over twelve months. Um, yeah, that's that's right about drift. I can definitely show you if I were to change this to a really short period, how how massive the drift becomes, and so suddenly we have a really strong pull up. We're still only checking for a month here. So this is our now predictive price movement that it would actually skew all the way up because of drift. But drift can be difficult in in DeFi because you know no one knows which way things are going, which is why we we uh, we decided to make it optional, especially over short time frames. Yeah, that makes sense. Super cool. Um, yeah, I mean, um, I think uh, happy to hear from anyone in the call. Um, just like questions or suggestions or even just uh, how you guys have been using the tool because it's only so often that we get an opportunity to connect directly with you guys. So uh, yeah, I would love to just hear any feedback. I would also love to address um, Houston's message here uh, about future um, features. There's just one that I wanted to uh, sort of go over.
uh, in our current positions page. Right now we have the the edit positions. This has been been uh, suggested to us by um, a member of Perp's team. Um, we were planning to add check boxes so that users can do batch actions like exit multiple positions. Um, uh, well, actually, that's the only batch action that I can see us supporting easily. But it would be a very useful one for a lot of our users. Super low hanging fruit. Um, we're really excited to address it. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, Houston's Houston's one of our um like we've Houston is a trader himself. So um it's really nice to see your feedback and questions. Um yeah, and and you guys mentioned that you guys are also um working, you already implemented alerts with on your other tools. So maybe some details on how the user can actually benefit from that. Yeah. Um, so right now, on a wide range of DEXs and lending pools, users can um, can uh, basically subscribe to, to different triggers um, and be alerted when things change. We're just opening up a closed beta right now. So it is like uh, you, you, if you if you're interested in, in uh, taking part, um, you know, we'd be happy to set up some a meeting to chat offline further about that. Um, but you can't just go to our you know, page and, and uh, sign up for alerts um, as of yet. But um, yeah, users can choose you know, volume, um, price movement, uh, uh, APR, um, rewards or fees, any of those that they wanna be alerted about changes in, they can, they can get those alerts on their phone uh, through Telegram, Discord or Slack. So is it like a um, Telegram based alert? Uh, it, the alerts can come through through Telegram, but also Discord or Slack. Oh, got it. OK, very cool. Nice. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been an interesting time because um, the current like volatility in the markets is at an all time low. And uh, which I think from an LP point of view, since you're essentially, um, I mean, you essentially make money when it's less volatile, right? So I feel like it's been an interesting time for uh, LPs and especially in like changing your strategy because for a super volatile industry, this is probably the least volatile we've ever been. Yeah. Yeah, it can be it can be very hard to track, but yeah. um, I mean, there was some we we saw a lot of price movement in in Ave, just or was that Ape? One of these pools was was really good. Just just in uh, in testing some things a few days ago, I accidentally made a hundred bucks LPing. Oh my really small values. Those accidents. Yeah, it was wonderful. <laughs> Oh yeah, I was here. Oh Very nice. Much. But yeah, you're you're absolutely right. It's um, in times of really low volatility, it it can be uh, especially hard on on LPs, people who who you know have a really formulated strategy around providing liquidity. Um, but I, I think that tools like this this can help a lot. So we're here if you need us. Um, we have a suggestion from Houston. Um, for folks managing LP positions manually, it would be nice to be able to conditional remove positions based on some set criteria. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I we, We've talked about forecasting this feature um, before, but I'll have to get back to you about uh, about the viability and the, the time frame. 
that we, we could approach this in. Yeah. Yeah. I especially like like the max. Um, I feel like for LPs trading like manually, I think the max drawdown number is quite interesting. And I think something that people should look because like the ROI is obviously something that everyone loves to look at. But um, if you are if like if you are simulating a position uh, which has a super high ROI, but also a super high max drawdown, then it's interesting to kind of like keep in mind the leverage that you want to be able to that you want to uh, have for a position like that because this max drawdown number can kind of give an indication of how much leverage you can safely take. Like you can have a position with a super high APR and a super high max drawdown, which will put you at a higher risk of liquidation versus like a lower APR, but with a lower max drawdown, which maybe you can then like leverage up more. Um, like, I don't know, Brent, what do you think about how people should actually look at these numbers and make sense of them? Yeah. Um, so for, for max drawdown, this is like the worst case IL that you experienced over and absolutely it's super important for liquidation. We actually take that into account when we use our uh, liquidation prices value. So you're going to see this go way up when you when you use um, more and more leverage. Uh, right now, it's impossible for downward motion to liquidate this position. This is like the theoretical hundred dollar total position with a collateral of fifty eight. So it's almost you know one point seven two leverage. Um, but you know that if Ave were to reach this 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 value, then you'd see um, a liquidation event. This is um, this is probably like my favorite part of the tool. I wish it was even more useful because this can get hairy when you have multiple positions. Um, you know, this is if Ave does this, and you know, we pretend that you're not in any other pool. It's it's uh, it can be, you know, because Curve could also do something that would would lower this value, increasing your overall loss. Yeah, and and most markets tend to be correlated more often than not. So if exactly all positions move in the same direction, then your gains or losses can get amplified. Exactly. Uh, but I still do really like this this value. I think it's a very helpful note to keep in mind, like, oh, okay, there's that's double the value of, of Ave at the moment. So that's significant padding for me to, to invest at this level comfortably without feeling the threat of a liquidation event. Um, also, with my cap at 69 here, there is, you know, it's likely that I'll be able to to pull out my position and deploy it again in more useful range before we reach this value. Yeah. Um, we have a message from Christian as well. Um, automated stop loss and take profit strategies that DeFi Saver has would be nice for sure. Yeah, that's a really cool one that we've explored too. It's hard to figure out exactly how long it would take us to implement it, and what the what the direct benefit to the user would be. But it's definitely something that we're we're really eager to explore. Yeah. So is is a take profit strategy something like a like compounding your um, profits and then depositing it in the position again, kind of like a compounded rebalancing? Exactly. Yeah, and the thing is, like, these are, I guess, like, these, I guess, then we start to go into the um, in, into the world of, like, automated strategy building, where you build, like, automated rebalancing, other strategies, um, which, which are just super interesting. Oh, we have dynamic range setting as another one. Yeah, that's for historical backtesting that Rem is referring to. We would be able to, um, I mean, theoretically, in this in this case, we, we're not sure what um, what the size of this item would be to to incorporate into our flow, but um, 
something that we've looked into in the past a little bit is the ability to uh, set multiple ranges under different conditions for a back test. God. Oh, like instead of these predefined like one month, three months. Exactly. Saying that uh, as the price did this, let's pretend that our position did this. Gotcha. So not manually setting a like a like a strategy, but yeah. instead, um, you know, assuming that you would execute this strategy manually. Yeah. How would it perform? Yeah, there's like a whole. I feel like with these, there's like a whole host of things that you can just keep building on. There's like on back testing alone, it can, um, you know, dynamic like range, dynamic um, uh, timing, or and then there's on simulation mode, like there can be just an endless number of features that you can have. Like how do you simulate the price? How do you? Um, what kind of simulation that do you do? Like for example, the question we discussed the other day was. When you're back testing, do you assume the liquidity was added in addition to the existing liquidity, or do you assume that you were a part of the liquidity that had been there uh, historically? And I feel like these are, um, yeah, th there's like a lot of um, depth that you can have in either one of these, or you can just have. Uh, then there were some suggestions which were more on the automated actions, right? Like batch actions or automated rebalancing, automated trade take profit strategies, uh, which is why it's really useful to have like feedback on which one um, we should prioritize and which ones are like users most interested in. Absolutely. Yeah, there really is an endless. It, we, one of the first issues that we had after we, we launched V1 was trying to fit everything into our UI, which we've managed to keep to one page. And we've had this internal fight about trying to not enable scrolling on the on the on the page to keep it like a nice dashboard. Um, yeah. Um, how far is possible? And also if it's for all pools. Yes, it is for all pools uh, for back testing. Uh, some pools don't have data that goes back. Actually, I don't believe this is true anymore, but when PerpSim came out, uh, some pools were lacking um, data that went back 12 months. And I'm sure that it's it's likely that uh, Perp may have added more pools. Um, that it may not have data for 12 months um but uh but that's handled gracefully so yeah it's all pools and uh 12 months is the farthest back that is possible to do back test oh no sorry six months is the farthest back that is possible to do a back test but that same information is true about um uh, some pools previously didn't have it but at this point we've been around longer than six months uh, when we were having that issue so that's no longer the case Yeah, I mean, I think in, in crypto world, six six months is a pretty significant time period for any kind of strategy development. But yeah, we could definitely extend that period if that's useful. Um, uh, I would even think that for like for LPs specifically, it's it's not necessarily um, if you were you know if you were buying and holding a perpetual for sure. Uh, six months might be reasonable, but for for an LP position, it's likely going to be irrelevant after you know. If it survives a month, then I'm I'm pretty impressed. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually curious to know like how um, how often uh, our LPs are changing positions. Like, is it more like let's have like plus minus fifty percent and just sit back and relax, or is it more like dynamic? Um, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen any trends um, based on the numbers that you see on chain. Um, or I don't know if anyone on the call has like some insights on how actually you guys are helping um, on Perf. Like a trader mindset versus investor. If that makes sense. Well, for me, anyways, in my it, when I'm actually um, using this this in trading, um, I I almost I edit my positions every day or two days. 
and uh, usually I'm I'm out of positions pretty pretty quickly. I move, positions will survive maybe you know four days before I, I move them to. But I usually keep a pretty narrow range because it really helps maximize um, ROI. Interesting. The time resolution for back testing. Um, okay, so I think I know. What you're, so we actually do back testing in two two ways for um, periods um, under um, like a month. We're using swap data, um, and then post one month, we're we're using hourly data. That resolution is is constant, and the time is also constant. So it's it's. Uh, which is, it's, I mean, you might think it's a little backwards because, you know, d different amounts of swap data exist. So, you know, you're going to have different loading times for different pools because of that. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's so backtesting for one month uses swaps longer. Um, we're using uh, hourly data. Oh, sorry. I realized I may have just answered that question without mentioning what I was answering. That was um, Ayub, uh, Ayub's question, the follow-up about the time resolution that's possible for backtesting. I don't know if everyone was aware. Got it. Um, I think while we're waiting for some other questions, just wanted to um let you guys know the best way to reach out um you can of course reach out to us on discord at any time we have a dedicated channel uh specifically for questions related to uh perp sim um i could drop the link here oh wait i don't think you can drop links to like a channel in particular I've been sent that link before. Let me see if I can. Yeah, I got a link. Yeah, that's our our, our feedback channel inside of Perp, um, where we're we're checking in to monitor. Uh, user reported bugs we are still in beta i want to uh, mention so you know if you if you notice anomalies it uh, in the system it might not just be you please let us know um and we're we're eager to fix it we're usually pretty fast depending on the complication of the bug uh, most uh, issues are solved within 3 days yeah i can definitely confirm that <laughs> Uh, great. Um, so I think we're about to wrap up soon. Um, if you guys have any other questions, please reach out on Discord or, yeah, uh, you can DM us or, yeah, there you, there you go. You have the email of James. Uh, Brendan, if you want people to contact you directly, feel free to drop your... Um, yeah, let me see if I can copy my Discord username. Yeah, Discord got rid of those hashtag numbers, which is a relief. Yeah, that's why it changed. Yeah. <laughs> um, great. So yeah, we welcome any feedback, especially around like new features that you'd like to see, or just if you want to chat about how you've been using the tool. Um, and of course, the recording will be available for um, anyone to see later. So if you have any friends or any community members that you'd like to um, show off the tool to, please please feel free. Uh, or just go back to it at any time for any questions. Um, yeah, that's it. I think, Brendan or James, did you guys have any closing comments? Well, yeah, thank you so much, Anisha. It's been an absolute pleasure, as always. I'm uh, happy that we got to go through the tool and, and show you guys what we've been working on. Amazing. Thank you so much. And thanks a lot, guys, for joining and taking the time. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one, guys. Bye now. Bye-bye.